I was Secretary of State for five years. I believed in evidence-based decision-making. I still do. We mustn't allow this current post-truth world to take over. The London School of Economics has done a brilliant job in getting politicians to think about how you can use external expertise to shape policy making. Especially with Brexit, the need to do this is far, far more urgent than ever before. 2017 is a year of huge political and economic questions for the UK. One of the biggest is how to generate growth that is inclusive and sustainable, and that deals with the challenges facing the UK, both old and new. Drawing on advice and research from leading policymakers, business leaders and economists over the past six months, the LSE Growth Commission sets out priorities in four key areas. Britain's flexible job market has led to employment at record highs, but wage growth is worryingly low. What we have to think about is the human capital. That's the skills, the education, the training, the experience of those at the bottom of the earnings distribution. And there are new challenges, including the rise of automation and of new flexible ways of working. We've got to make sure that across our businesses, people are really learning the skills they need to be fit for the jobs that are going to be created over this decade when we see a huge change in the technology that's transforming all of our lives. The Commission points out that in the UK, the playing field is not level. The economy is tilted in favour of self-employment over employee status and towards investing in buildings and machines over staff. So policymakers must start work on a new tax system that supports companies who take on full-time staff and invest in their skills. The Commission supports the government's decision to develop a new industrial strategy and its status should be recognised as among the most important areas of economic policy. Industrial policy matters because we live in a world that doesn't have market efficiencies. So it needs an industrial policy, it needs joining up with government, and it needs a solution that goes uh, across a, a long-term outlook, which is very unusual for private investment uh, to do it on its own. But the system needs a complete overhaul, starting with a new British state aid law, with clear public targets, independent oversight, and transparency when government money is spent supporting industry. We absolutely need to think about both the rate and the direction of change in terms of economic policy co-creating and shaping markets, not just fixing them. Shaping markets actually helps us get much more systemic type policies and less patchy policies which we know have not worked. The Commission sets key areas the new industrial strategy should focus on, including ensuring that universities and companies work together on scientific and technological challenges, and steps to improve productivity in low-wage, low-pay sectors. There's the high-growth innovative sectors that have various impediments to growth, such as problems accessing finance for new ideas. And then there's the larger low-productivity sectors where there are all sorts of obstacles to growth, such as getting the right skills in their workforce. The UK gains from openness. Following the decision to leave the EU, the UK urgently needs to negotiate new trade deals with the US and EU, as this accounts for two-thirds of UK trade. The UK is a small, open economy, and when you are a small, open economy, you need a market. Europe is close to Great Britain, and so the two have to trade together. This is something that you cannot fight against. Britain's strength is in services. Any deal with the EU must focus on a services passport that secures access to EU markets for Britain's businesses. And the Commission urges the government to ensure that new visa reforms recognise the UK's skills shortages. The absolutely central question is the ease of access for institutions based in London, many of whom, of course, are, who are not UK institutions, into the European Union. The Commission points out that access to both bank loans and to equity finance is vital for British companies to grow. The UK is the fintech capital of the world at the moment. I think a priority for Brexit negotiations is maintaining that, enabling that innovation to drive purpose, to change culture, to create new consumer services. The Commission suggests a set of financial reforms based on promoting access, competition and long-term planning. This includes supporting challenger banks and boosting the role for the British Business Bank once the UK leaves the EU. 
There's a lot of research that the inability of growth companies to get access to credit in particular is one of the killers of British productivity. This all adds up to a big to-do list for the UK government. The previous report the LSE did is something that when I was the Chancellor I put into practice and it's now part of our British public policy making. So I'm very excited about what the LSE is going to come up with next. The big focus for me is how you ensure you've got growth that creates well-paid jobs to enable people to save, to buy their houses, to get on. By focusing on evidence-based policies that seek sustainable and inclusive growth, the government can set a strong economic foundation for generations to come. Our generation are the generation that have grown up only knowing economic downturns and recessions. That means the policies that are implemented today are the policies that we'll have to live with. Therefore it's vital to get these policies correct.